Tuesday, Wednesday, who cares? Waking up makes me happy no matter what the calendar says. SSE fixes and engine fixes. Installation is quick, so let's get that taken care of, and then I'll get technical for those who want to know more. Here's the bullets. The addition of SSE fixes to engine fixes may help some of you get faster loading times. Some initially disabled engine settings can be activated to potentially boost performance. SKSE 64 is required. Everything is linked, including a tutorial on how to install SKSE. Load order does not matter. Let's do it. SSE engine fixes. Download page. Part 1 via the Mod Manager download option. Install and activate the mod. Back on the download page. Part 2. Manual download. Open the archive. In the second window, open the game folder. Dump the archive inside. If you are updating from a previous version, simply overwrite everything when asked. A final trip back to download the optional file's memory patch. Do so via the Mod Manager option. Install and activate. Mod 2. SSE Fixes Download Page By itself, this mod requires a second step, but because we've installed engine fixes, all we do here is download the main SSE file via Mod Manager. Install and activate. Since the last video, there's been an update. For engine fixes to properly function, you need to install address library. Basic install, load order doesn't matter. And there's a fantastic video that someone made explaining the mod in depth. I recommend it. Mod video section one, done. Most of the settings that we change, and those we don't, are self-explanatory. To keep things moving, in this section I only show how to change the any settings. You don't have to use them all just because I do. In the following section I explain my choices for those who want the details. Vortex Users From the Mods window Open Mod Staging Folder SSE Fixes MO2 Users In the left pane, right-click SSE Fixes Open in Explorer. Everyone. Open DLL plugins. Open the any file. The first settings are automatically disabled and handled by engine fixes. For peace of mind, you can set them to zero, but you don't have to. The final setting, replace mutex, is one that engine fixes does not have. Activate it by setting it to one. No worries, it can be turned off at any time by changing it back to zero. Done. Close and save the any. Vortex Users From the Mod Staging folder, open SSE Engine Fixes MO2 Users Right-click Engine Fixes Open in Explorer Everyone SKSE Plugins Engine Fixes Any Disable Charge M Precache If you do not have the Mod Race menu installed, set this to True. I don't know that it would cause any harm if it's set to true even with race menu installed, but why take a chance? Regular quick saves. True. Memory manager. True. Save game max size. True. Close and save the any. Vortex users. From the mods window, deploy mods for the changes to take effect. If you undo any of these changes in the future, remember to deploy mods again at that point. The settings we changed, what they are, why you may want to change them back to how they were or not. The SSE Fixes setting, replace Mutex. Mutex, protect your nasal passageways with a guard that never goes on break. Ask your doctor if Mutex is right for you. Can help loading screens move along more quickly. Some see no difference. Others experience much faster load times. Some say this setting makes their menus laggy, though the author never experienced this himself. If you experience menu lagging, disable this setting by setting it back to zero. Simple as that. Engine fixes any. Disable charge M precache, also known as the precache killer. 
It comes with Race Menu, which is why I assume it's deactivated here by default, as most people use that mod. It comes from an old SKSE plugin that disables the caching of face gen parts that can crash your game if you have a lot of hair mods installed. Regular Quick Saves in the vanilla game, and this is true for all Fallout and Elder Scrolls games up to this point in time, the quick save function creates save files that slowly become corrupted. This can eventually lead to your save files no longer working. You don't even need to mod the game for that to happen. Setting this to true forces the quick save function to use regular game saves as if you open the menu and created one manually, avoiding save file corruption due to this issue. Memory Manager Setting this option to true can decrease load times and potentially avoid infinite loading screens. The downside is that you can lose up to 10 FPS or more while playing. Since Skyrim is generally going to be capped at 60 FPS, a lot of you will never notice a difference anyways. Though, if you experience low FPS, you should come back and set this option to false to see if your performance increases. Save Game Max Size Setting this to true, as the description says, increases the actual save file capacity from 64 megabytes to 128. By default, if your save file becomes larger than 64 megabytes, it won't load. Your save file is dead. The flip side of this is, if your save file is larger than 64 megabytes, you are probably using a mod or 50 that's causing issues, and you should junk that save and start over anyways and rebuild your load order. With this size increase, if your game is already modded poorly, it will only buy you limited time before the inevitable happens again. With that said, now being informed, I still like to have the wiggle room. Speaking of wiggling, go ahead and get up out of your seats, have a stretch. Better yet, get outside for a while and enjoy the day however smoldering or freezing it may be. Class is over. Take care of yourself.